let's talk about the analysis node. And specifically, we're going to talk about how to use the analysis node when you happen to have categorical outcomes. The analysis node is located in the output palette. This node allows you to evaluate a model's predictions and so that you can see how accurate that model's predictions are and also so that you can compare predictive models to each other. The analysis node is going to show you information like model accuracy and consistency. So in this example, we can see the level of accuracy for each one of these different models. And then we can also see how accurate, was, how accurate the model was with the training and with the testing data set. So let's go through an example of how to use the analysis node. Now in this case, I've already have my stream, I've already built two models, one using a Chade model, the other one using a cart model. And I'm trying to predict the outcome status, whether I've kept the customer or whether I've lost the customer. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to connect my last generated model to the analysis node. So I'm going to go down to the output palette and connect that last generated model to the analysis node. I'm going to edit the analysis node. The analysis node knows automatically what it is that it has to analyze. It's going to analyze the predictions from the two models that I've created. Notice that here they are, R status and R1 status. They're arranged in the order in which the information is fed into the analysis node. Now the only thing I'm going to check here is because I happen to have a categorical outcome field, I'm going to choose coincidence matrices. I'll talk about some of these other options in a little bit. So I'm going to just click on run. And this is what your outcome is typically going to look like. The first thing that you get is it gives you information on the first model. In this case, the first model is the chain model. So you can see what's going on here. You can see, for example, that out of the training data set, Notice that I have a partition node, so my data is split into a training and a testing data set. Out of the training data set, we've correctly predicted about 85% of the cases. For the testing data set, we've correctly predicted about 83% of the cases. Now, what this is telling you is it's telling you two things. One, it's telling you what the overall level of accuracy was for your model. But then it's also letting you know whether your model's results were consistent. Because remember, your model was built on the training data set, and then new data was fed in, and it gave you results for the testing data set as well. So there are two things that you want to see here. One is whether your model was accurate enough for your goals. And the second, you want to make sure that your results are consistent. In this case, they are. You can see that 85% is pretty similar to 83%. Now, whether that level of accuracy is good enough, that's something else. That's a different question. Now, because I clicked on coincidence matrices, I can see the breakdown in terms of how well I predicted each one of my different categories. You can see, for example, that this is what uh, the rows are showing you the actual values, the columns are showing you the predictions. And you can see that when somebody actually churned, churned, we correctly predicted them 632 times. We made an error 60 times. You can see that when somebody really was a current customer, we correctly predicted them 707 times. And we made an error 183 times. So again, you have to determine if this level of accuracy is good enough for you. Because whereas up top, it just told you the overall level of accuracy, here you're able to see if you're making systematic errors for in predicting one category or another. Then you can see that same level of information for the partition node as well. So one thing you want to do is you want to make sure that the level of accuracy is good enough for you. Make sure that you have that consistency between training and testing data sets. And make sure that the level of accuracy is also good within the specific categories of interest. Um, you don't get percentages here. If you wanted to get percentages, you could choose a matrix node and that would give you those percentages. If we scroll down a little further, we can see the information for the second model, which was the cart model. We can see that in the training data set, the accuracy was about 85%. In the testing data set, it was also 85%. Again, you want those numbers to be consistent and you want those numbers to be uh, at an appropriate level for you. You can then see the breakdown in terms of predicting each one of the, uh, the categories themselves. Now, if we scroll down a little further, we get a little more information. Now, this is telling us 
how much in agreement each one of these models were. So you can see, for example, that when it came to the training data set, the Chade and the CART models, they agreed about 93% of the time. In the testing data set, they agreed about 92% of the time. So the agreement between these two models was actually pretty high. And below that, you can see, for example, that when these models did agree, when they made the same prediction in the training data set, they were accurate 88% of the time. In the testing data set, they were accurate 87% of the time. So this gives you a little bit of, uh, you know, potentially additional information that maybe if you combine these models, you might actually end up improving your predictions. So that's how you can interpret th this kind of information. So like I said, that's typically the kind of information that most people would get when they end up choosing the analysis node. But there are some additional options, and let's quickly take a look at those as well. So I'm going to close out of this window, and I'm going to go back into the analysis node. And let's talk about some of the other options that are available here. We have this option for uh, performance evaluation. I'm going to select that, and I'm going to also select confidence figures. Okay, The confidence figures option is going to give us some additional information in terms of the confidence values that we have for the models that we've just chosen, that we've built. You can see that we're going to look at the 90% uh, uh, correct uh, threshold. We certainly could change that if we wanted to. And we're also going to look at the uh, two-fold uh, situation here. We could change that as well if we wanted to. In terms of uh, performance evaluation, what that does is it basically takes your classification problem and it takes the um, level of accuracy into account, but it also takes the difficulty in predicting the categories into account as well. So we'll take a look at that in a little bit. A couple of other things I want to point out here. The um, uh, analysis node knew which fields to analyze because it was using the uh, model output fields metadata. Um, you could certainly choose that option. You could also choose the option uh, field names format. Okay, so you can choose either one of those options. Most of the time you're going to go with the default, but if you end up changing the names of some of the uh, fields that you're predicting, you might want to go with the default there so that you're looking at the actual metadata. If you end up modifying some of these uh, predictions and, uh, and these fields, you could also change the uh, name of the format for a field that you're going to use as a prediction field, and then you can choose that uh, uh, second option there. Also, I want to point out that uh, we're using the uh, separate but by partition, so it's automatically recognizing the partition node so that we have results for both the training and the testing data set and a validation data set if we had chosen that as well. There's also this option here. Let me just click on that for a second. And you have this option to define a user measure. So right now, we have accuracy defined as when your prediction equals whatever the actual outcome was. Now, we don't have to define it that way. We can click on define a user measure for accuracy and we can say something else. This is what we have as a default, but again, we can change it to something else so that you're evaluating accuracy in a different way. I'll click on cancel here. All right, let's run this. And uh, the next time we open up the analysis node, I'll talk about how to break down the analysis by fields. So we'll click on run. And we saw some of this information previously, so I'm just going to close out of some of this, uh, some of these tables here. Now here we have our performance evaluation measure. This measure is going to have a value of zero if you're just predicting at chance. Higher values indicate that you end up predicting at a higher level, and remember you end up basically weighting that value by how difficult it is to make predictions for particular categories. So these numbers tend to be useful when you're basically comparing the results of one model to another so that you can see whether uh, one model was a ba better able to predict those difficult to classify cases. So here again we can see uh, the results between the training and the testing data set. Those values are fairly similar for both uh, churn and also for uh, the current customers. We're also looking for that consistency as well. If we scroll down a little further, we can see the confidence values. You can see that this is for the training data set. You can see that the confidence in prediction, those values range from 0.5 to 0.997.
You can see, for example, that when we made a correct prediction, the average or the mean confidence value was 0.869. So that's, that's pretty high. You can see that when we made an incorrect prediction, the mean confidence value was 0.661. And one thing you want to make sure is that when you're making the correct prediction, you want to make sure that you have a higher confidence value. It means that you're able to trust the results of your model. You can see, for example, that you were always correct when you had a confidence value of, in terms of making your prediction, you were always correct when you had a confidence value of 0.977 or higher, and that applied to about 27% of the cases. You were always incorrect when you had a confidence value, in this case, of 0.5 or lower. In that case, that didn't apply to any of the cases in, the, in this data set. The 90% uh, uh, level of accuracy, that was, that was never reached here. Okay. However, if we scroll down and uh, we look at uh, the uh, testing data set, we can see that we were accurate, 90% um, accurate or more, when we had a confidence value of about 0.73. Okay, and you can see also the uh, the twofold uh, correct value that you have there, and that's showing you the confidence value at which the accuracy in this case is two times better than it was for the overall data set. So there, the uh, that particular confidence value is uh, point uh, nine two eight. Let's scroll down a little further. You can see the same kind of information for the uh, CART model as well. And again, you want to take a closer look at all this information to see how well you're really uh, capturing uh, your predictions and uh, what the confidence levels are like and things like that. You also want to make sure that you have consistency across the uh, training and the testing data set as well. Now I'm just going to close out of this window and I'm going to show that last option. So I'm going to edit the analysis node. I'm going to deselect performance evaluation and confidence figures. And this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose this last option, Breakdown Analysis by Fields. I'm going to click on the drop-down arrow next to that box, and here you have the different categorical fields that you have in your data set. Now, I'm going to choose a field that for me is important. It's the Premier field, basically letting me know whether it's a valued customer or a regular customer. I'm going to select that field and I'm going to click OK. Now, what this option does here is it's going to break down the results for valued customers and for regular customers. And that way I can see if my model tends to do a better job for one particular type of customer or another. I'll click on Run. So the model information, that's all the same. We're going to scroll down a little further. And here we can see what the results are now broken down by this field Premier. So you can see when Premier equals no, or basically a regular customer, in the training data set, we're correctly predicting them about 80% of the time. In the testing data set, about 78% of the time. And again, this is with our first model, which happens to be the Chade model. Now, if we look at the, um, the CART model, we're correctly predicting them 80% of the time here and 78% of the time. So the consistency is there. But in terms of overall level of accuracy, we're at, at about 80%. If we scroll down a little further, we'll skip the agreement section. And we look at those people that are premier customers, are very valued customers. You can see that we're correctly predicting them about 89% of the time in the training data set and the testing data set, 87% or 88% of the time. That's for the Chade model and for the CART model, 91% of the time and 92% of the time that we have there. So you can see that when we happen to have a valued customer, a premier customer, we're correctly predicting them somewhere around 90% of the time. So this lets you know a couple of things. One, if we had not used the field Premier in our model, we may want to incorporate that variable in the model because it seems to be an important variable. Two, it's also letting you know that for some reason we're making better or more accurate predictions when we happen to have a valued customer. Now that might be because we have more information on them or they've been a longer customer um, of ours and things like that. But it's good to know first of all that you're making more accurate predictions for a certain type of customer but in addition you might try to think of what additional information you have about this particular type of customer in this case the valued customers that you could potentially add to the model because you could potentially get that kind of information added to the model and improve your predictive accuracy
So I'm just going to close out of this window. But that's an example of how you could use the analysis node. So remember, you can use the analysis node not only to assess the accuracy of a model, but it also allows you to compare models as well. And it also allows you to see where you potentially might be able to improve models.